adding and subtracting two-dimensional vectors, the graphical approach. So now we know that in two dimensions, vectors are represented by arrows. The magnitude of the vector tells us how much, while the angle of the vector relative to the positive x-axis tells us the direction. Now that we have this knowledge under our belts, we need to figure out how to add and subtract vectors. After all, in most of our one-dimensional problems, we were adding and subtracting vectors all the time. We need to do the same thing in two-dimensional vectors as well. It turns out that there are two approaches to adding and subtracting vectors. One is the graphical method, which allows you to visualize the resulting vector, and the other is the analytical me method, which allows you to get precise values for the magnitude and the direction of the result. And in physics, we need to be able to do both of these, but we're gonna start with the easier of the two, the graphical method. All right, so. Let's suppose you're on a hike and you have a set of directions. These directions tell you to travel 1.2 miles at a heading of 60 degrees and then turn to a heading of 135 degrees and travel 3.4 miles. Where would your final destination be? Well, notice that you were given two vectors that are two dimensional. So we have our Cartesian coordinate plane right here. Your travel would look something like this. In this picture, the blue arrow, this arrow right here, represents the first leg of your journey when you traveled 1.2 miles at a heading of 60 degrees. The red arrow represents the second leg of your journey when you turn to an angle of 135 degrees and traveled for 3.4 miles. Here we go. Notice that the direction is always defined relative to the positive x-axis. Thus, the 135 degree angle is defined relative to an imaginary line that runs parallel to the positive x-axis. This is the imaginary line that runs parallel to the x-axis. So the 135 degree is off of this imaginary line right here. An angle of 135 degree relative to that imaginary line is also 135 degree relative to the positive x-axis. Notice also that since the second leg of the journey was longer than the first leg, the length of the second arrow is larger than the length of the first. So on this leg, the first leg of the journey was 1.2 miles, and this is a much longer line than this, and the magnitude here was 3.4 miles. The end of your journey then is represented by the tip of the second arrow. So this would be where you finished. After all, the red arrow represents the second leg of your journey, and the tip of the second arrow is the end of that leg. Thus, once you have completed the trip, you are at the tip of the second arrow. What vector describes your final destination? As we already learned, in order to construct a two-dimensional vector, we draw an arrow from the starting point to the finish. So we started here and we finished here. Thus, this dashed green line, green arrow below represents your final destination. I have just guided you through the process of adding vectors graphically. Notice what I did. I was given two vectors. In order to add them together, I took the first vector and drew it starting at the origin. I then took the beginning of the second ve vector which is called the tail of the vector, and started it at the end of the first vector, which is called the head of the vector. The arrow and then that then goes from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector, completes the triangle and represents the sum of the two vectors. You need to be completely comfortable with adding vectors in this way. Thus, you must remember the steps that we just did. When adding vectors graphically, take the tail of the second vector, right here, 
and place it at the head of the first vector. The head is the arrow. The vector that then completes the triangle by starting at the tail of the first, the tail of the first, and pointing to the head of the second represents the sum of the two vectors. All right, so let's go ahead and look at example 3.1. Given vectors A in red and B in blue, draw the vector that represents the sum of A plus B. Also draw the vector that represents the sum B plus A. Well, let's first start with A plus B. So in order to solve this problem, we simply follow the rules established. Realizing that we can move vector B around as long as we do not change its magnitude or direction. So I will move it until its tail, this, the, this end, rests on the head of vector A. And that's what we did. Notice that even though I moved vector B, its direction is still the same as is its length. Now that I've moved it into the proper position, the sum of these two vectors is illustrated by drawing an arrow from the origin to the head of vector B. So this is where it starts, and this is where it ends up. So A plus B is this magnitude and this direction. So the dashed arrow then represents A plus B. To calculate the sum of B plus A, we do the same thing, but this time we move vector A because it is the second vector. So we start with B and then we move vector A. We just slide it to the end of vector B. Now, since vector A is the second vector this time, the sum is represented by drawing the arrow from the origin to the head of vector A. So this is B plus A. Notice that the dashed vector, which represents B plus A, is the same size and direction as the vector representing A plus B. And this is a general rule. Vector addition is commutative, just as scalar addition is. We've talked about adding vectors. Now we have to figure out how to subtract vectors. All right. What about subtracting vectors? Well, it is nearly the same as adding them. When you need to com compute a minus b, you do it by taking the vector a and adding it to the negative of b. How do we term determine the negative of a vector? As we learned in one-dimensional motion, the positive or negative sign of a vector denotes direction. Thus, the negative of a given vector is the same size vector going in precisely the opposite direction. So here's the other uh, rule that you should commit to memory. When subtracting vectors, take the vector being subtracted and make it point in precisely the opposite direction. Then add the vector to the first. The vector that then completes the triangle by starting at the tail of the first and pointing to the head of the second represents the difference between the two vectors. So we are given vectors A in red and B. Draw the vector that represents A minus B, and then draw the vector that represents B minus A. Let's start with A minus B first. To subtract vectors, we must first take the vector being subtracted and point it in precisely the opposite direction. So if B started this way, we have to flip it over and point it in exactly the opposite direction with the same magnitude. So here we see that this is minus B. So now that we have minus B, we simply add it to A. So we take the tail of B and put it at the head of A in the same direction. The arrow that is now drawn from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second will represent the difference A minus B. So A minus B is this magnitude in this direction. Now let's look at B minus A. Drawing the vector that represents B minus A is done in precisely the same way, but this time we take the negative of vector A 
because that's the vector being subtracted, minus a. The end result is follows. All right, so we keep, we keep b the same as it started up here. So we have a positive b right here. Now a started here. In order for us to have a minus a, we have to flip it over here. So minus a would look like this. And then we have to put the tail of minus a to the head of b and add them. Notice that the dashed arrow in this case representing b minus a is different from the previous dashed arrow representing a minus b. From the two drawings, you should be able to see that these vectors have the same magnitude but opposite directions, and that makes them different vectors, which tells us that even though vector addition is commutative, vector subtraction is not. All right, on your own 3.1, draw an arrow that represents the vector a plus b. I put a sticky note, a transparent sticky note, so I could sort of show you, so just bear with me here that this works. So to add these two vectors, we must move the second one so that its tail is at the head of the first. So I'm gonna trace this so we have the exact same magnitude. And then I am going to slide this Let's go ahead and get our dashed x-axis. And then let's move this until it meets. Here we go. So we moved the second so that its tail is at the head of the first. Now we can figure out the final vector. So we can, tr we can draw a line from the origin to the end There we go. The vector that starts at the tail of the first and points to the head of the second represents the sum. So green, this vector in green represents A plus B. All right, so now let's look at on your own 3.2. Draw an arrow that represents the vector b minus a. So sub to subtract a from b, we must first take the negative of a. All right, so if this is a, the negative of a is going to flip in the complete opposite direction. So let me line up my imaginary x-axis. So again, I have my transparent sticky note and I am going to completely flip it around. And now I have this is negative A. All right, so A, negative A. Now all I have to do is add negative A a to B. So now I have to move my sticky note one more time. So I have to do like, here we go. So I move the tail of my negative A to the head of B, and now I have to draw 
the new vector, the resulting vector. So we start at the origin and go to that. There we go. The vector representing the difference is then drawn by starting at the tail of the first vector and pointing to the head of the second. So the dashed green arrow then represents B minus A.